Hello again, Steve Fentress on behalf of the Strassenburg Planetarium at your Rochester Museum and Science Center with things to watch for in the sky, weather permitting, for the week starting around April 30th, 2020. On April 30th, first quarter moon high in the sky. If it's clear, you'll see it in the afternoon. Venus will get to in a moment. And we're going to swing our view over to the east-southeastern horizon and go forward in time to the evening of Wednesday, May 6th. Thursday, May 7th will be similar because those are the evenings we'll have a full moon rising about the time the sun sets. Wednesday the 6th and Thursday the 7th. You look east to see that and you'll have that experience, that mysterious psychological effect where your eye and brain tells you for sure the moon looks huge when it's rising, but you can measure it and see that it's not larger than when it's higher in the sky. An effect called the moon illusion, which psychologists still have not completely explained. Well, let's look again over toward the west, and we are starting at the moment the sun sets. This is about 8.11 p.m. on April 30th, and a little earlier than that later in the week. There's Venus, pretty easy to spot just about the time the sun sets. It is so bright. And we have time in fast forward now. What will appear next? There it is, the brightest star in the night sky, Sirius, and there's Betelgeuse. And below that, see the three stars of Orion's belt. The constellation Orion is coming to the end of its season. Just another week or so to be able to see the whole figure after it gets dark enough to see stars, but before it sets. Looking a little higher in the west on any spring evening, any year, as seen from North America, the archway of spring, four bright stars, Procyon and Pollux, Castor, the other Gemini twin star, and Capella. So we have the two C stars on one side and the two P stars on the other, Procyon and Pollux, Castor and Capella. And this year we have Venus underneath that big archway in the west after sunset in spring. Let's check the northern sky. And if you watched uh, last week, you may remember we played that little game to see when the bright star Capella and the bright summertime star Vega would be level with each other. That already happened. There's Capella and there's Vega. This week they're level with each other about 10.30 p.m. Directly north, very low in the sky, that bent W shape. The constellation Cassiopeia in ancient Greek mythology, queen of Ethiopia looking at herself in her mirror and she was punished for her vanity by being made to go around and around in the sky, her chair upside down half the time. Up high on spring nights, there it is, the big dipper and it will look really big. And the last two stars in the cup of the Dipper always point to Polaris, our North Star, the star that's almost exactly in the direction where the North Pole of Earth's axis of rotation points. The ancient constellations that contain the Dippers, the Big Bear Ursa Minor, excuse me, the Big Bear is Ursa Major, the Little Bear Ursa Minor. One artist's interpretation of the bears. And everything appears to go in a circle around Polaris, the North Star. Swinging our gaze around to the east a little after midnight, well, let's look up high. Always a good thing to do. See how the curved handle of the Big Dipper points to Arcturus. Follow the arc to Arcturus, a beautiful bright orange star that will be with us all night now at this time of year. And you'll notice that even when the sky is lit up by a full moon, as it will be on the nights of May 5th and 6th, about one o'clock in the morning or so, Jupiter is rising. 
More about that in a moment. High in the eastern sky in the wee hours of spring, the summer triangle. The stars Vega, Altair, and Deneb. Even with a brightly moonlit sky, even in a bright city sky, you can see the summer triangle. And the constellations containing each of those stars, at least according to one tradition, Lyra the Lyre, Aquila the Eagle, and another bird, Cygnus the Swan. While we are here, there is a meteor shower going on this week. The Eta Aquariad meteor shower is expected to peak on the nights of May 4th and 5th. But that's a shower that is usually a better seen from farther south and with a nearly full moon. Uh, consider yourself lucky if you see a meteor on the nights of the 5th or 6th. Bright orange star Antares, part of Scorpius the Scorpion, definitely visible in the south by 3 a.m. And now let's look at these planets that are coming up in our morning sky. Jupiter, really bright. Saturn and Mars. And we're stepping back to April 30th and then stepping forward in time to see how much Mars is moving from one day to the next. And Mars is going to get brighter and brighter as we approach October, the time coming this year when Earth and Mars will have one of their close approaches. Let's look over toward the west and look at things that are setting just as dawn is breaking in the east. So if you have a window that happens to face west in the morning in the spring, look for the Big Dipper and the handle points to Arcturus. And we switch our gaze back to the east. This is the time when we uh, may see satellites going overhead, and a good place to find out what you might see is the website heavens-above.com. Put in your location and a date, and it will tell you what satellites are passing over, what part of the sky they'll be in, and how bright they will be. And the best times to see satellites are in the hours shortly after sunset and shortly before sunrise. And here comes the rising of the sun earlier and earlier every morning at this time of year, bringing our spring night to an end. Thank you for watching this week. We'll see you next week.